and welcome to the first installment of the Let's Read series. Uh, this is just a fun project I decided to give a try because I enjoy reading to people and whatnot. So this is just a little experiment, and if it goes well, I might do more. Depends if anyone likes it. Anyway, the first book is uh, Wild Magic by Tamara Pierce. Uh, it was the first book that really got me into reading. And the first chapter is called Girl with a Pony. I don't own the book or anything or the characters. This is just for fun and whatnot. So, alrighty. Here we go. Each year, at the end of March, a great fair was held in Kriya, the capital of Gala. Like thousands of others in the eastern lands, Anua Chamtung went there to do business buying ponies, in her case. This year she had another transaction to make and was having no luck with it. By the end of her fifth day at the fair, it seemed she would never find the assistance she required. The prospect of taking her animals south, with no one to help, was an unpleasant one. Excuse me, Trader Anula? The speaker was a girl, shy and country-bred. I heard you was hiring. I'm... She paused, then went on. A fair hand with animals. All kinds. She waited as Anua looked her over. A girl in a green wool dress, skirts short enough to show leggings and boots. Brown curls tamed by a headscarf fell to thin shoulders. A soft, full mouth said she was vulnerable. Her chin was entirely stubborn. A quiver filled with long arrows hung on her back. A bow rested in her hand, unstrung. "'Is that yours?' the curator asked, pointing. Blue-gray eyes flashed. "'I'd not have the nerve to carry it otherwise.' "'Hm. String it.' The girl hesitated. Just what I thought, Anua jibed. Whose is it, really? The girl brought a coiled string out of her sash. With ease, she fitted it to one end of the bow and set it against her foot. Raising the free end of the string, she brought the other end of the bow down, hooking them together neatly. The bow strung and in her grip, she turned sideways to it, caught the string in two fingers, and drew it back to her ear in one smooth, practiced gesture. Now Anua could see she wore an archer's wrist and arm guards. I'd put an arrow up, the girl said, gently releasing the string. But I'd hit someone, surely. Anua grinned. I'm impressed. I can't draw a bow that big. The girl took the string off the bow, coiled it, and put it away. Nor did I, at first. I keep this one limber, or I still couldn't draw it. Crossbow? The question was out before Anua remembered. I don't want to hire her. I want to send her home to her mom. She's a runaway, for sure. Yes, am um, We have... Something flickered in her eyes. She looked down. We had bandits at home. I stood watch with the sheep, so I learned crossbow and longbow. And sling. A half-smile appeared. Not that I'm bragging. We had, Anua thought. Did she change it because she wants me to think she's been gone from home a while? Or hasn't she got a home? Something looked around the girl, inspecting Anua with a large brown eye. It was a shaggy mountain pony, a steel gray mare. She was plump and well-combed, and bore two packs easily. Yours? The girl nodded. How much would you ask for? Her? Anua motioned to a pen filled with ponies at her back. I'm in the market. I can't sell Cloud. She's family. All the family I got. Again, Anua saw a flash of sorrow that was pushed aside. What's your name? The commerce stuck her fingers into a pouch filled with a powder known as Eyebright. Dane, mum, came the soft reply. Fair the Dane Sarasri. The eyebright made her fingers itch when Anua called on her magical gift. How old are you, Dane? Fifteen. An aura of red fire, visible only to Anua, flared around the girl's face. The lie was a good one. She must have practiced on the way, the trader thought wryly. But a lie nonetheless. She looked only about thirteen. Where are you from? Snowsdale, up north. About two weeks' walk. There was no flare of red. She had told the truth. Anua sighed. Are you a runaway? From from home or a bad master? No, mum. The soft mouth trembled. Got no family. Just cloud. No red fire this time. Anua dusted the powder from her hand. I'm Anua Chamtung of the Kamiri Rade. Dane looked puzzled. Kim the what? The Kamiri are people to the east. Rade is the name of one of the Kamiri tribes. Dane looked only slightly less baffled. Never mind. You say you're good with animals. Come here. She led the girl to her pen. Inside, twenty-seven shaggy ponies in all colors and sizes milled around. 
I buy horses. I had an assistant, but he got offered a better job working for a horse merchant here, and I wasn't about to hold him back. If you hire on, and I didn't say I'd hire you, you'll help me take these south. It's three weeks drive, if we don't bog down in mud, if we aren't hit by raiders, and if we go before all these people take the road to the next fair. It'll be just you and me and my dog to hoy. Why don't you climb in and look him over? I want to see how you manage him. Dane glanced back at her mare, Cloud. Stay put and no biting, she ordered sternly, and clambered over the fence and into the pen. Poor thing must have been alone a long time to be talking to her as if she could answer back, Anua thought. She sat on the fence rail to watch. The ponies watched as Dane passed among them. Ears went back. Those close to her appeared to wonder which would do better, a bite or a kick. When a yellow stallion, the king of the small herd, minced into place at her back, the girl spun and put both hands under his muzzle, lifting his head to stare into his face. No, sir, she told him firmly. I'll not stand for any tricks. I may be human, but I'm not stupid. The stallion tried to rear. She forced him down, then blew gently in his nostrils to teach him her scent. He shuffled, then fidgeted, then bowed his head in submission. Horse lords, Anua thought. She's establishing domination over him and the entire herd. In years of managing horses, she'd never seen the like. This particular breed was famous for its fiery nature, one of the reasons she purchased them for her employers. She had achieved peace, of a sort, with them using her strength, her wits, and bribes. All horse folk handled their animals that way. Only this child was different. Dane treated the stallion as if she were a pony herself, a dominant one. She isn't lying about her folks or running away, just about her age. If I let her go, she might get into trouble. There are too many predators around looking for a pretty little thing like this one. The road isn't too safe, but what is? She watched the girl move among the ponies, running her hands over each one. She was giving them bits of apple and sugar from her pockets. Anna was glad to see she could deal with the animals in a normal way. One display like that with the stallion was more than enough. Do you ride? she called. Dane came over to the fence. Some, mostly bareback, but I can use a saddle, and I know how to look after tack. What about hunting, fishing, tracking? The grin lit a face that was too thin and eyes that were too weary. I do all that. Had to to get this far. I couldn't trust folks on the road. Some look like bandits. As Dane climbed over the rail, the shadow was back in her eyes. Grief, Anua decided, but anger, too. Tired of them already? The girl shook her head. I'm getting an oil I have and a swab. The strawberry has ear mites. They're not too bad. If I get them now, he won't spread them to the herd. She went to the gray mare, who was plainly sulking, and opened one of her packs. How do you know you can trust me? Dane shrugged. I don't. How do you know you can trust me? Was that a joke? Anua's voice was stern, but her eyes laughed. Her last two assistants had possessed no sense of humor. Dane gave her a quick smile and climbed into the pen, a clay bottle and swabs in one hand. Anua watched, amazed, as the strawberry gilding trotted up to the girl. If someone had said that morning she'd see one of her charges willingly submit to an ear cleaning, she would have laughed herself sick. I shouldn't do it. She's a baby. There are all those rumors, and there's no smoke without fire. Still, my magic will keep us safe at night, and she can handle a bow. Dane, she called. The girl had finished the gelding's ears. She came over. Yes? I'll tell you right now. I've heard a lot of weird stories lately, about monsters in the wild, attacking travelers. Things out of legend, so folks say. I haven't seen any myself. That doesn't mean I won't. Are you sure you want to hire on? Dane shrugged. I hear tales. I need work, Mum. If I see monsters, I see monsters. My family was killed and my home burned by human ones. All right, then, here's the job, said the Khmer. You, me, and my dog take the herd south, like I said. I have the gift, and I can shield our camp at night. It's two coppers a day, two silver nobles as a bonus at the end. I pay all expenses, and we share chores. No drinking, no drugs. If you leave me on the trail, you'll wish you died as a child. Dane giggled. At the end of the road, we'll see. We're bound for the capital of Tartal. The girl's face lit up. Where a lady knight is the king's champion, right? And they the girls in the army? That, Tortal? You heard those stories, too, the Khmer murmured. Well, they don't let girls in the regular army, mind. Just the queen's riders. Why, have you a fancy to be a soldier? 